so we will start with introduction to Scopus, then we will go to Scopus search. Uh, we will do some advanced practices in document, journal and author searching. Then we will look into metrics uh, and we will do some practices in document metrics, tracking, journal metrics tracking, comparing different journals. And we will look into author metrics and then we will compare it to Web of Science and we will do some practice as well. So what is a Scopus? Scopus is a citation database. Sometimes it is also called the Scientometric database because it includes some Scientometric indicators, such as age index, site score, and uh, etc. We will talk about them today. Why is it called citation database? It is called citation database because the main numbers on which we can rely uh, in tracking research impact are citations. Citations are something that authors uh, receive when their documents are being cited and are being added to other authors' reference lists. So Scopus is a citation database as well as Web of Science. Scopus and Web of Science do not contain full texts of articles. Well, they may con contain the full text only in case if it is an open access. Open access is the uh, model of publishing, is an open model of publishing when the full text is freely available without any charge, without any payment to readers. And if this uh, article, this particular article is in open access, then Scopus will show you the full text or will show you the link to the full text. But it does not uh, contain full text in all the cases. It may include references to full texts or it may include the link to the full text on the publisher's website, in primary sources and etc. What does Scopus contain? It contains lists of bibliographic references for each publication. They allow you to get the most complete bibliography on the topic. It means that when you have found an article that is relevant to your topic, you can find the reference list to this article in Scopus and you will find the complete bibliography uh, on, on this topic. You can view citations to your publication or to publications of other authors. You can view author age index. You can choose a journal to publish because Scopus as well as Web of Science include high rated, uh, well established international journals. So you can choose a journal to publish here. And you can view some journal metrics such as uh, site score, SNP, percentile, quartile, and we will talk about them today in details. Scopus is a easy and quickly access to information about the number of citations of the document. The developer of Scopus is a publishing company Elsevier. Elsevier, you can uh, go to their web page. I will share this presentation with you about, uh, after the lesson, so you can go and check. They have other products besides Scopus. Elsevier holds uh, the rights to Science Direct and to Mendeley. Uh, Mendeley is a bibliographic reference manager. So maybe you use Mendeley. Mendeley today is a product of Elsevier. Uh, and on their website, there are a lot of interesting materials, study books, uh, how to use different resources, uh, interesting information for authors, how to apply to journals of Elsevier and etc. All can be found on this website. The slogan of Elsevier, of this publishing company, is refine your research. What does it mean? It means improve your own research by defining precisely what you want to look for. 
Scopus contains more than 70 million abstracts from more than 32,000 journals, 5,000 international publishers, 8 million conference proceedings. So you have a big list of journals to search for and to select from. What does Scopus contain? So we have talked that Scopus does not contain full texts. Uh, Scopus metadata, metadata contains everything ex except the full text itself. Uh, Scopus uh, documents are taken from peer-reviewed journals that are indexed in Scopus, books that are indexed in Scopus, conference proceedings that are indexed in Scopus. How do documents uh, get uploaded into Scopus? Well, you have to be published with a journal that is indexed in Scopus. A uh, journal can apply for indexing in Scopus, but this is the work that the uh, journal editorial board needs to do. You as an author cannot change the situation other than just selecting a journal that is indexed in Scopus or whether it is going to be indexed in Scopus or is not indexed in Scopus. So um, you cannot uh, apply for being indexed in Scopus as an author. You can just be published in a journal that is indexed with Scopus. Scopus is a commercial database, which means that Kiev Mohila Academy and other universities in the world, worldwide, they need to pay a fee every year uh, to subscribe to Scopus. Today, Kiev Mohila Academy has subscribed to both citation databases to Scopus and to Web of Science, so you can access them on the campus or remotely. Uh, and the access is going uh, with this web interface www.scopus.com. Well, when we are on campus, we can just Google the word Scopus or we can start from the library website, page resources, page databases, and we just can select Scopus from here. From here, we have selected Scopus and it will be opened on the campus uh, from your own device or from computers on the campus without logins and passwords. So um, if you are using Scopus remotely, like off campus, from other uh, cities, from other countries, remotely from campus. Uh, you can use it with your corporate email. To do this, you need to go to this web link. I'm using this, uh, I'm using Scopus remotely today as well as you. So I need to um, log in here. I have logged in already today, but if you are doing this for the first time each day, it will ask you your corporate email your corporate email and the password to your corporate email. So the login is your email and the password is your password to your email. And this menu will appear where you can just select Scopus and it will be opened for you. Uh, regardless or of where you are today on the campus, in other city, in other country, you can use Scopus because it is provided to you by National University of Kiev Mohila Academy. Okay, let's go. Let's go forward. When we log into Scopus uh, on the campus or uh, remotely, Scopus can ask us to log in into this uh, database, into its account. Uh, you do not need to worry because this is necessary only in order to create your personal account. So you may work in Scopus without creating your personal account, without logging in here. But if you do log in or if you do register, you have several benefits. The first benefit is that you can create your lists in your account. For example, you can select some documents or you can set up the document alerts. Uh, or you can set up the journal alerts 
for example, if you have found a journal uh, in which you want to be published, you need to start reading this journal. So you can set up the journal alert and you will be um, you will receive notifications every time that the journal publishes new issues. Or you can set up the do uh, document alerts or citation alerts. For example, if you do have published, uh, if you do have an article indexed in Scopus, you can set up these notifications for your own article and you will receive notifications if your article gets cited, if someone has cited your article. So you can register here. Uh, the second benefit of registering in Scopus is that it will provide you with your personal Elsevier uh, credentials. Uh, th those will include your username, it is just your email, and the password that you need to come up with. It could be any password that you like. Uh, if you will register in Scopus, you will have your personal Elsevier credentials, which will work in all the products of the Elsevier company, which we have mentioned today. It's Science Direct, it's Mendeley, and they will work remotely. Uh, well, Mendeley is a free free database, but Science Direct is a subscribed subscribed database. It can also be used by the corporate email of Kiev Mohila Academy, but also by your own Elsevier credentials if you do register in Scopus. If you can see the signature Scopus preview. It means that you have not logged into Scopus, uh, neither by the um, local network on campus or neither by remote access. So um, if your Scopus web page shows this Scopus preview, it means that you need to log in uh, with your corporate email or it means that you are on campus but you might be using mobile internet instead of Wi-Fi. For example, you have your personal devices with you, could be mobile phones, uh, but you are using mobile internet instead of Wi-Fi. In case we are using Wi-Fi, Scopus sees that we are on the campus of Kiev Mohila Academy and it will be opened without restrictions. If we are using mobile internet on the campus, Scopus cannot see that we are uh, using the uh, Kiev Mohila Academy internet and we will not uh, we cannot access Scopus. So just check if you are using Wi-Fi on the campus. You can use Wi-Fi on the in the library or in your uh, building number six um, or just any kind of the internet in Kiev Mohila Academy. Well, if you do see Scopus preview, this is a free um, access to Scopus uh, for those universities who do not have subscriptions. Scopus preview does have several uh, options for those who did not uh, subscribe to it. For example, you can search for authors. For example, uh, you are the author who published an article and it is indexed in Scopus. You can search for your name, your last name uh, and you can see your author profile and you can make a request to change the details of your author profile. For example, if your details, if your credentials, if your <clears throat> affiliation is broken or it is um, it needs uh, improvement or it needs to be changed to another affiliation, etc. You can make a request to change it and you can do it with Scopus Preview as well. So you don't even need to be subscribed to Scopus to make changes if you are a, a, a Scopus author. You can view the sources list, but this uh, free uh, Scopus preview will not give you access to the documents. So you cannot uh, look or search uh, or view the documents in Scopus, the metadata. You can all only view the author profile or the list of the sources, but you cannot open the sources and view all the documents. So when we are entering Scopus, it is a, be uh, a best practice to log in uh, 
Uh, it could be your uh, name and the last name, and it will show you your organization. National University of Kiev Mohyla Academy. The next step is how do we search in uh, Scopus because it can be tricky. And to start doing some uh, scientometric practices, we need firstly to look into the search tips and search life hacks, and we will start using the advanced, advanced search today. So let's see. Uh, we have different search options in Scopus. Uh, basic search is a simple search. You can find the basic search on the first page of Scopus. In the tab documents, you can just start typing any word or phrase to search for some specific keyword. You can perform an author search here in the tab authors to look for specific authors. Affiliation search, you can look for all the documents published within your organization. An advanced search is a very good uh, instrument to look for um, everything that you need to find on Scopus and probably some options you have not known before. Today we will look into that also. We need to remember that databases only work with us, only understand us if we are speaking with them, if we are working with them in English because Scopus indexes English language titles. Uh, the full texts of Scopus documents, the full texts of articles indexed in Scopus could be of any language in the world. But Scopus asks journals only to uh, index metadata in English. So we can only search in English to find some uh, books, articles, conference proceedings, we can search for the titles, abstracts, keywords, authors, and etc. The basic simple search uh, will help us to get the general information from the specific industry. For example, we need to come up uh, to come up with our topic of our scientific research in the university. We can just type in our keywords and we will get the general information about this research field, the main topics, the most uh, cited documents and etc. It is also possible to limit the search criteria to specific time frames, document types and subject areas. Today we will work with advanced search in Scopus. Advanced search can be found in this tab, advanced. Uh, it will show us uh, different kinds of field codes, uh, field codes and different operators such as Boolean operators, proximity operators, uh, all can be used in this advanced search function. Advanced search function will ask us to type in enter query string. What does it mean? Sometimes students come to us and ask, uh, what does it mean if Scopus asks us for enter query string. It's just the mm, name of this field. It means type in some keywords or phrases. So you just need to start typing in your keywords that describe your search. There are two ways to search for phrases in Scopus. Uh, as we remember from the previous lesson, that we do not need an quotation marks to search for one word, but we need some symbols to search for phrases. As well in Scopus, we need an exact search or approximate phrase search to search for phrases. Let's look at them. Exact phrases. If we have an exact phrase, for example, molecular genetics, we need to take this phrase into curly brackets into curly brackets. In result, we will have all characters, spaces, punctuation marks that we included in the curly brackets. I'm sorry, that we included in curly brackets. For example, heart attack without hyphen and heart attack with hyphen 
will return different results because the second brackets contain a hyphen. Searching for health care quote a, um, question mark returns results such as who pays for health care question mark. So if we have an um, exact phrase, it could be the name, the title of the journal, or it could be the title of the article, or it could be any exact phrase. We need to take the exact phrase in curly brackets. Approximate phrase is another way to find phrases. It is performed in quotation marks, just like in EBSCO. What is the main difference uh, between quotation marks and curly brackets? Let's look at the example. Heart attack with hyphen in uh, quotation marks will find all the documents where the words heart and attack are next to each other in the title, description or keywords. Uh, but um, if we just type in heart attack with hyphen, but without any curly brackets or quotation marks, we will find all the documents with the words heart and attack are next to each other or separately in the title, description or keywords. So what is the main difference? Uh, uh, curly brackets give you uh, the best possibility to search for exact phrase. It could be the title. Uh, and the approximate phrase search will search for any kind of phrase which can be, um, which can include the words, uh, that we have taken into quotation marks and these words will be next to each other but they could include other words in this phrase and the exact phrase will include only those words and those punctuation and those symbols that we have included in curly brackets. Uh, it can be tricky uh, because if we have made a mistake and we have taken the word, for example, uh, molecular, but we have spelled it um, with a mistake and we have taken it in curly brackets. The um, Scopus search will give us no results because uh, curly brackets in Scopus are considered to be something that we uh, defined as uh, a true, uh, something as we defined true. So if we have made the mistakes in curly brackets, um, Scopus will look for this phrase with a mistake with our mistake because Scopus takes this as something that we want to see. Uh, so you, we need to check the grammar and check the spelling if we are using the curly brackets. The approximate phrase search. Uh, when searching for an approximate phrase in uh, quotation marks, the punctuation is ignored because when we are searching for a phrase in uh, curly brackets, the punctuation uh, is taken into account. In approximate phrase, in quotation marks, the punctuation is ignored. Heart attack with hyphen and heart attack without hyphen will give the same result. So this is the difference between uh, approximate phrase and the exact phrase. Special characters are also, um, are also working in approximate phrase search. Well, we do remember some special characters from the previous lesson about EBSCO. For example, criminal asterisk, insan asterisk, will find criminally insane and criminal insanity. The plural and uh, declension the, or the grammarly variation of the form of some words are taken into account when we search with the approximate phrase. For example, heart attack will find heart attacks, the plural form. Scopus has some stop words. Stop words are a list of words that are ignored when searching in Scopus. 
uh, those words include about, again, all, almost, also, also, always, among. Scopus ignores these words. But if you need to insert them into your search, they must be entered with curly brackets or question marks. For example, if you need uh, to look for a phrase with word all, all of the something something, you need to take this phrase or into uh, um, quotation marks or into curly brackets. There is a full list of these words that can be ignored and uh, I will share this link with you. The Boolean operators, just like in the EBSCO example, we have the uh, George Bull, who was an English mathematician, philosopher and logician. He came up with this Boolean operators or Booleans. In EBSCO, we had uh, operators called AND or NOT. In Scopus, these operators are called AND or AND NOT. So this is also tricky. We have the third one called end not. And they work similar to uh, operators in EBSCO. Cognitive and architecture gives us results for cognitive architecture. Liver or damage. We will find liver damage or liver or damage. Lung and not cancer will only find us lung because we did not want to search for cancer in our results. Wild cards are specific characters, specific symbols that can help us with our search. Uh, we can use wild card characters to search for variations of word, making our search shorter and simpler. Uh, but please note that only one, one wildcard can be included in a single term, in a single search term. For example, question mark can replace a single character anywhere in the word. Uh, you can use uh, one question mark for each character you want to replace. Example, uh, Nürberg, Nür, question mark, Berg finds different cities Nuremberg or Nuremberg. Asterisk is another symbol that gives us chance to replace a multiple characters anywhere in a word. For example, um, behave asterisk finds behave, behavior, uh, other variations of this uh, spelling behavior. Um, it could be English or American variants. Behavioral, behaviorism, etc. The asterisk replaces zero or more characters, so it can be used to find any number or to indicate a character that may or may not be present. Example, you can put in asterisk before the uh, word, for example, uh, tocopherol finds alpha tocopherol, uh, gamma tocopherol, beta tocopherol, tocopherol ex, uh, itself, tocopherols plural, uh, plural and etc. Next operators are new for you because we did not have them previous in previous lesson. Today we will look into them. They are called the proximity operators. Proximity operators, um, we can search for some words located at a certain distance between each other in the text, where the distance means the number of words. For example, we can have this um, one phrase uh, in different va variations. Red brick house or brick red house or house made of red brick. How do we use, how do we search for this phrase in different variations? We can use proximity operators. Proximity operators uh, include two uh, operators. First one is called within. Within 
uh, it is spelled like W slash N, where the N is the number of words after the word. And pre N, pre N means before something, is the number of words before some specific word. Let's look at the example. Sensor within 15 robot will show us all documents where sensor is within 15 words from robot. By limiting proximity, these phrases can be found by avoiding documents where words are scattered throughout the page. Uh, we can use different kind of booleans with these proximity operators. For example, water or vinegar or wine within five, oil or yogurt. If we have lots of words and lots of operators, we can select some um, uh, brackets to put in um, between our operators. The number n within n or pre n could be for, could start from zero and to 255. Uh, so uh, 255 is a big number. So it means that you can search within words that stand in the distance up to 255 words between each other. 255 words is pretty much a big um, paragraph. So you can look for words that stand in a big paragraph um, separately. And fields. In Scopus, in advanced search of Scopus, we will use some field codes. Field codes will help us look for precise documents or precise materials. Let's look at these field codes. Uh, they are uh, used to find precise metadata. For example, title ABCK means that we are looking for uh, specific keywords in the title of the document, abstract of the document, and keywords of the document. For example, genetics in title ABC keywords, in title abstract keywords, or Prion disease in title abstract keywords. It returns documents where the term appears in the title, in keywords, and in abstract. Um, the search index terms prion disease will return documents with the indexing term prion disease. We have different field codes. For example, we want to search in all fields, only in abstracts, in affiliation ID, or in affiliation, for example, if you know some specific organization uh, like Kiev Mohila Academy. You can look for some keywords in abstracts. For example, ABC Dofamine returns documents where Dofamine is in the abstract. Affiliation, when we will search in affiliation field, you can specify if you want to, uh, if you want your terms to be found in the same affiliation. For example, you can mention that you want to find all the documents about dopamine in the affiliation Kiev Mohila Academy. And what will be the result? As a result, we will see all the documents uh, mentioning dopamine published by scholars from Kiev Mohila Academy. Affiliation is combined with uh, another field code, such as a field city, affiliation city, a field country, affiliation country, and a field org, affiliation organization. For example, we want to search for dopamine from all the scholars from Kiev and then we will use the affiliation city. Or we will uh, we want to search for dopamine from all the scholars from Nigeria. We will use the affiliation country Nigeria and ABC dopamine, uh, abstract dopamine. We will uh, search for dopamine in abstracts from uh, all scholars from affiliation country Nigeria. Affiliation organization is just a um, name of the organization. Uh, example, 
Afil City, affiliation city Beijing, returns documents where Beijing is in the city uh, or in author affiliation fields such as Beijing Engineering Software Technology Company. Affiliation country is uh, the same, but we will just look for some specific country. Exa exact source title. This is an very important for you because exact source title shows us uh, the titles, the names of journals indexed in Scopus. So if you want to find whether the journal is indexed in Scopus, you can look for it in advanced search using field called exact source title and the name of the journal. You can uh, use for, um, you can search for specific term or keyword if you don't know the specific name of the journal. For example, exact source title brackets behavior returns all the documents published in the source physiology and behavior but not documents in the source addictive behaviors because be careful we have different spelling in these two words we can do the journal search how do we find uh, journals in scopus the easiest way for us is to go to the sources tab. The tab sources is here on the navigation panel. It is called sources and it includes a complete list of journals indexed in Scopus. You can use the subject area box here. We, you can enter the title of the journal you are interested in or you can switch it to the subject area and you can type in the subject area you would like for example molecular biology when you will start typing your subject area it will suggest subject areas that match there are several broad subject categories and many more subcategories. For example, uh, there is a broad category called dentistry and lots of subcategories about dentistry. And if you can find one that exactly matches the area of your interest, pick the closest available heading. Then just click apply to refine the list by your chosen subject area. For example, here is the list of all index journals uh, today. Today in Scopus we have uh, like more than 42,000 journals. That's, that is quite a big list. And we need to filter from, through this list. So we can see the um, first places in this list. They, these are the most prominent, the top uh in ratings the most popular the most um the, the biggest international journals that are indexed in scopus they are on the first places but you can search through this list if you have the name of the journal that you are interested in or you can just type in your uh subject area or you can type in the ISSN number of the journal etc you can filter this list and the display options help us to only display open access journals why can it be important because we can start reading journals that are indexed in Scopus. Open access journals are journals that have full texts in Scopus. We can just put a um, check mark here near the display only open access journals. And we will see all the journals that we can be downloaded as a full text. We can specify the minimum uh, number of citations that we want to find uh, within these journals. We can um, select some site score or quartile uh, ratings. We will talk about site scores and quartiles uh, in a few minutes. We can uh, select some source type, for example, journals or book series. Let's try to do it right now. For example, here is our starting page. 
And we want to find for all the journals indexed in Scopus because we want to find journals uh, that can be of our interest in some journals that we can uh, read and download. So in Scopus sources here, we have a full list of more than 42,000 journal titles. This is quite a big list. We can just browse through them or we can start looking for some specific subject area. Let me just enlarge the screen. No, it does not allow me. Okay. We want to look for a specific subject area. For example, Scopus introduces some subjects like agricultural and biological sciences, arts and humanities, biochemistry, genetics, molecular biology, business management and accounting, chemical engineering, chemistry, computer science, decision sciences, dentistry, earth and planetary sciences, economics, energy, energy, um, environmental science, health professionals, and I guess that health professionals is our subject area. We can just select all the journals in this subject area, or we can select specific um, topics in it. For example, hero practice, uh, manual therapy, emergency medical services, general health professionals, health information management, health professions, medical assistant, medical terminology, pharmacy, and etc. pediatry. Let's just select the whole subject area, health professionals, and let's look at the journals that we have. We have mm, almost 700 results, almost 700 journals in the subject area, health professionals. We can look through this um, uh, matrix, but we will talk about matrix in a few minutes. Now just let's find the journals that we can read and download. Let's put a check mark near the display only open access journals. Let's do it. Um, apply and we have 146 journals that we can read and download so uh, someone mm, is uh, sure that you cannot read any documents indexed in scopus or that you are not allowed to read journals indexed in scopus because those are closed journals and uh, they need subscription this is not true because not every journal is closed we have also open access journals and you can read through them now we are interested in journals of the first quartiles for example, first and second, apply. And we have 69 results of open access journals included in first two quartiles. First two quartiles means that these are the most, um, uh, these journals have the highest um, ratings in Scopus. Um, for example, sports medicine, medicine the Lancet Digital Health. Let's look at the Lancet Digital Health. We have the mm, journal profile, the Lancet Digital Health. It is open access. You can view all documents. You can see the metrics here. We will uh, look into site score metrics in a couple of minutes. We can set the document alert because if it is the journal that we want to read, and probably someday we want to be published in it. We need to set the document alert and we will get new notifications when the new issues arrive here. Uh, we can save it to source list if it is a journal that um, describes our research interest. We can save it to search source list. It will ask you to log in to Scopus to do this. 
uh, and you can just um, store all your lists in your account. If you have your account, if you have logged in, if you have created your account, you can have your lists of all saved documents or of all saved journals. Let's view all the documents from this journal. We can select years, for example, the latest uh, issues or uh, starting from 2019, and we want to download these full texts. We can just select all the documents that we want to download in full text and click on download. The download uh, must start. OK, it will ask me to get the extension. We will talk about this right now and you can download the full text as well. There is a link to download this document from the web page or uh, it will just go and um, show you how to do it at the publisher's website. For example, here view at publisher. And on the publisher's website, the publisher is uh, Elsevier as well. We can view the full PDF in such in such a traditional PDF format. So some documents can be downloaded from Scopus, and it is easy. Uh, okay, let's continue to our presentation. When we have search for specific documents, the search results will be displayed as a table and they can be easily viewed and sorted by columns, for example, by date newest, by date oldest, by document relevance, by first author from A to Z or by first author from Z to A, by source title from A to Z or by source title from Z to A, by citations, highest or lowest. You can select specific documents and export them, download them if the full texts are available, add them to lists, create bibliography, create reference lists, print selected documents, email selected documents, save the selected documents as a PDF. Uh, what does it mean to save a selected documents as a PDF? For example, um, you have chosen a list of documents that are um, that are of your research interest and you want to use them and you want to share them with your colleague. You can select all these documents, save them to list or just save them as a PDF file. This PDF file will include only the title, the journal name, the author, the abstract and will not include the full text. But it is just a list that you can print out or save as a PDF uh, to, for example, for yourself for the future or to share with your colleague. If we have searched and we have results, we need to refine them, to sort them, to sub select specific documents and to save them as a list or to export them. For example, we can sort them here by date newest or to refine them. For example, within our document search, we can um, type in other keywords and we will only have those results within this search that mention our new search keywords. We can refine results, only leave open access documents that can be downloaded from here. Only leave documents from 2021, for example. What does it mean, by the way, if we have uh, the 2022nd year? It means that this is early access. It is called early access. Uh, this article will be published in 2022, but Scopus knows already that this article is going to be published and it just imported it from the website. It imported its metadata. Of course, articles uh, that will be published in 2022 
will not have any citations because they are not published yet. But you can know already that this article is going to appear in this journal in the next year. You can refine results uh, in advanced search and then limit them to results you need to work with. You can click on limit to to show only those results that you have checked by uh, check mark or exclude if you have checked by check mark some results and you need to exclude these fields from your results page. And on our document results page, we also have different options. For example, if we have some um, search uh, that needs to be corrected, that needs to be edited, that needs some change, for example, we are not happy by the results, we can click on the edit button. There is an edit button with the picture of a pencil. We need to click on it and we can edit our search. For example, music and drugs. We need to edit this search. We can click on this button and we can edit these keywords and edit all the uh, operators and etc. We can save this search, set alert for this search, because if we have searched for some specific terms and we have our results, we can set alert. Uh, and if any other documents shall appear in this result field, in this result pages, we will get a notification. So uh, you will get a notification saying that there are new documents waiting for you in your result uh, page. Well, we can sort them, uh, we can um, export them, download, view, view citations and etc. So what can we do with a specific document? On the document page, we can see the title of every article of every book, an abstract, keywords, information about the author and the author affiliations, information about the journal, list of all the references, as well as other information, for example, the number of citations, the related documents, because if we have found this specific document, it could mean that um, uh, other, other um, similar documents can be of our interest. Uh, on the page of every uh, document, we can see the name of the journal. For example, Molecular Biology and Evolution. It is open access, we can click on this, on this name, on this journal name, and we will be transferred to the journal profile with site score metrics, with other scientometric uh, indicators, and we will just see the uh, profile of this journal. This particular document was cited by this big amount of documents, and you can look through all of them because there is a button view all the citing documents. Um, you can switch to author profile because if some of these authors mm, are your colleagues or it might be you, then you can click on this profile and you will be transferred to the author profile. There are some article metrics. There is a DOI. Uh, DOI is uh, DOI, Digital Object Identifier, is a serial number of every article, of every peer-reviewed research article that is published today. And every article has a DOI, has a DOI. You can find it here as well. There is an ISSN. What does it mean? ISSN is a serial number of the journal. Why is it important to know the ISSN number of the journal? Because if you want to get published, uh, let's say, in the journal Molecular Biology and Evolution, you want to get published in this journal, you need to check whether this journal is indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. You can look for the journal name, yes, in the tab Sources in Scopus. 
or you can look uh, by the journal title in Scopus Advanced Search or in Web of Science, uh, or you can look for the ISSN number. Because the journal name may, may show you not all the document results. There are also some examples, some, some situations when journals from non-English speaking countries use the transliterated names. For example, the transliterations from Ukrainian to English and the journal will, would be called not molecular biology and evolution, but molecularna biologia and evolutia. And uh, you cannot search for this uh, journal name by uh, typing it the name because it will not show you all the results. But if you know the serial number of the journal, it is the easiest way to find out if the journal is indexed. Where can you find the serial number of each journal? The serial number is absolutely every uh, situation when you go onto the journal homepage on the journal website. And it is right on the first page of every journal. You can just look for uh, the ISSN and then will be uh, this um, eight numbers. These eight numbers are the serial number of specific journal and you just can um, search in the advanced search field for these numbers and you will find all the documents by molecular biology and evolution regardless of whether it is transliterated from Ukrainian and it is called a molecularna biologia and evolutia or it is in English molecular biology and evolution or probably there could be a situation where the journal changed its name uh, and other different difficult situations uh, that may encounter. But if you know the ISSN number of the journal, you can just uh, type them in, in the advanced search in Scopus in Web of Science, and you will find this journal in Scopus in Web of Science. We will have a practice and we will do it. Then, on our document details page, what we can do, what options, what functions do we have? We can download this document if it is open access. Print it, email it, save it to PDF, save it to our list, create a bibliography and view at the publisher's website. This Scopus, Scopus document download manager, it is an extension, it is an application uh, that you can install to your web browser and uh, Scopus uh, will download automatically all the articles that have full text. This is very, uh, very um, useful because you don't need to go to the publisher website to download the full text. You can do it um, from the Scopus page. The Scopus download manager can be added to, for example, Chrome browser. Then you can just click on download. It will download the document, but if it doesn't find the full text, for example, this is a closed journal, this is a traditional publishing model, uh, which means that the journal is closed, which means that it is it needs to be subscribed to have uh, access to full text, then Scopus Download Manager cannot find the full text and it will tell you about this. It will tell you to check with the publisher if they have the full text, but probably they will not. We can create different lists, for example, thesis 2022, and we can mm, fulfill these lists from time to time by adding different uh, articles, by the, adding here different journal names, and you can specify your personal uh, list name. If we are indexed in Scopus, we can look for ourselves or we can look for some authors that we are interested in. In author search tab, here is the author search tab. 
we just need to type in the last name and the first name of the author. If we do not know the first name, it's OK. We can just type in the last name and Scopus will show us all the variations of people, of scholars with similar last names and all the variations of their initials and first names. And for example, this is an author profile page. It contains information about affiliation, affiliation, the Tokyo Metropolitan University, uh, recorded in the last publication. This is very important. Affiliation comes from the last article in Scopus. We are looking here at Scopus example, so our affiliation as an author in Scopus comes from our last article. So if our the newest article uh, mentioned that we are working in the Tokyo Metropolitan University, then our author profile will automatically mention that we work in the Tokyo Metropolitan University. How do you create an author profile in Scopus? The right answer is that you cannot create it yourself. Uh, only if you have your first article published with the journal indexed in Scopus, then your article will appear in Scopus and Scopus will automatically create your author profile. Uh, do you need to have H index for your uh, author profile to be created? No, you can have your author profile Mm, just by having one article published. And even if no one has cited your article, as it, it means that you will have an H index zero, uh, your, uh, your author profile will be uh, available to others and it will be active as well. On your author profile, what do you uh, need to do? What do you need to know? Sometimes there are some situations where when you need to change your affiliation. For example, uh, it was not correctly mentioned in the last uh, article, in your last publication, or if Scopus has transferred it and uh, has made some mistakes in the spelling of the university of, or in mistakes in spelling of um, your uh, organization name or your hometown, etc. You can edit your profile, but you can edit only your profile. So you need to click on the edit profile button and uh, there will be a form where you can contact Scopus support. They will make sure that you are this person and they will make changes into your profile if you can prove that uh, there are some mistakes and if you can prove that you have publications uh, and they will transfer the right uh, spelling here. Uh, also, there, are, there, there could be and different kinds of problems and issues concerning author profiles. For example, uh, someone can change the last name. Someone can change their last name. And you can combine different profiles. For example, you had your first profile, then you had another publication under your new name or surname. You can combine them again by editing your profiles, contacting Scopus support, and they will combine two profiles. In this case, your H index will show the combined uh, documents and combined citations. So if you had one document with H index one and another document and another profile with H index one, this H indexes will be combined. Again, we can see the number of documents in Scopus that we have published here. For example, here it is 65 documents, which is quite a big number. Number of citations in Scopus. This scholar has lots and lots of citations. The H index is automatically uh, counted by Scopus. You cannot anyhow um, change this number because this is 
counted automatically. For example, here it is the age index 28. Subject areas and most contributed topics during last five years. Uh, molecular genetics, placental mammal and other topics. Subject areas in which the author was published and etc. What we can do uh, if we need to search for specific affiliations. For example, we have the tab affiliations and we want to find all the documents published by scholars from Kiel Mohila Academy. We just can type in National University of Kiel Mohila Academy. Scopus will find this organization. We just click on it and we will have the affiliation page. The affiliation page is a page of the organization. For example, here it is a page of the National University of Kiel Mohila Academy. As of today, we have uh, 793 documents affiliated by Kiel Mohila Academy by 317 authors in the fields of social sciences, physics and astronomy, arts and mathematics, uh, arts and humanities, mathematics, medicine, chemistry, computer science, and so on. You can analyze all this information because Scopus creates uh, special uh, line graphs and pie charts when you can vis visualize all this information and all these numbers. And here we come to our practice, and I suggest that we have a little break until the next uh, lesson, let's take one um, half an hour and then we will continue to our practice and to our scientometric um, indicators. Okay. Let okay. me. Thank you, Alexander. Stop the recording.